Welcome to this episode of the Faster Than Light Speed Podcast. I'm your captain, Kenny, with my executive officer, Joey. Talk in the mic. Joey. It's Joey. It's Joey. Do you need to take a nap? Yeah. Dude, I was out shopping. And you're still moving around your microphone. That's why we do this test. <laughs> so you don't need to move around the microphone. Hey, um, I was shopping all day because I'm going off to college. So. so what's today's topic, Joey? We watched the retro Dune. Yeah. So yeah, last night we watched David Lynch's Dune release in 1984, I believe. We're going to talk about it and discuss what we hope to see in the new version coming in October. Not too far away. Uh Um, Uh-huh. We're also recording this early in the week, but we were were able to record it uh, the day after the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer comes out. So that's that's our point of news for this week. I think it's going to be our only bit of news this week. Yeah. I'm sure that there will be a Halo trailer that drops tomorrow. Uh, I hope so. But That's... We won't be covering that. Nope, so... <clears throat> so... Trailer showed quite a bit. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. It showed a bit of aftermath from Far From Home. Yep. And then... You, you lost see? energy. What do you mean? No, because you're not bouncing off. You're just like, yep. You usually yep. carry it. You usually carry this part. <sighs> well, usually I come in with my list of news. But y- y- you just jumped right into our one piece of news that we're going to talk about. This is our piece of news. Well, well yeah, because you don't have any news. Well, I we also have... You, I knew that you didn't have any well, news. We had Gamescom. That was like Xbox's thing. There's where nothing interesting. Not, nothing came out. So, yeah. It. So they showed off Aftermath from Far From Home, a bit of Doctor Strange, and Peter Parker, oh, I want to change, I want to, I don't want anybody to know anymore who, that I'm Spider-Man. Uh-huh. We have not talked about the trailer almost at all, by the way. <clears throat> yeah, beforehand. And then, oh, Doctor Strange tries to do that, and then, oh, there's some weird uh, interdimensional stuff going on. And maybe there will be some returning characters from old universes of movies. Did Doctor Strange also create the multiverse? <clears throat> I don't think he did. I think he just broke it down. Broke down some of the barriers. Sure. He tapped into the multiverse, is what you're saying. hmm Yeah, and he's going to be curious about that, which will lead into his movie. <laughs> yeah. Or something. But you see... Uh, what were some of the Easter eggs that you saw in it? But I saw a lizard... Um, you saw that they really you thought you saw a lizard. What? What do you mean? I thought I saw a lizard. Yeah, I heard some theories terrible. about that, but oh boy, do I hope I'm not. not too sure. You want a lizard? No. I think that could be good. That wasn't like a crazy. He had, he had uh, he had a weird scheme in Amazing Spider-Man, but the character overall was fine. Yeah. <laughs> like the Doctor Connors character and all that, but you see Doc Ock with a super CGI rubber face. I thought he looked, like, younger than he did in the original movie. <laughs> He's like, hello, Peter. Now, there's a lot of... There's a lot of uh, discussion about... A lot of people are like, he can't be talking to our Peter. But he could be. Oh, yeah, absolutely could be. Like He's like, well, he won't know... It's like he, Tom Holland, Peter Parker. He's like, when you see someone dressed like that, you're going to think it's Tobey Maguire under the mask, right? Well, I think that... That doesn't have to be his first appearance in that world. He could have been walking around for a little that's bit. That's true as well. And seen, oh, that's Spider-Man. This is this Peter Parker. Yeah. That's <laughs> and true I can recognize well. yeah. this guy. <laughs> but whatever. But, and you see the Green Goblin, like, bomb. You see a Green Goblin bomb yeah. for a second. That's who, that's what I'm looking forward to, that Green Goblin coming back. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be wild. Um. Yeah, overall... <clears throat> it's got some interesting stuff. Flash Thompson's blonde now. Sure. I feel like that's that's worth mentioning. Uh, every everything else. You gotta see Doctor Strange in not like a full cloak. He's just wearing some sweatpants and jeans. <laughs> and uh, I mean sweatpants and a sweatshirt. And like a winter coat because yeah. there's snow inside the sanctorum. Why I don't know. It's magic, Joy. It's magic. Why do? Whoa. There was like a dog that just ran through. <laughs> Past oh, the window. Sweet. Not sure. Dog. Sorry, that was. Um. 
What was I saying? He has magic, so therefore he can make his <clears throat> right. Sanctum, so, like, toilet. why in Harry Potter would they use owls to carry mail? They're the slowest bird. Yep. It's magic. I got. I got a theory. I got. I got a couple of theories. Yeah. On, on this. So. I think this movie takes place like that. Doc Ock comes straight from after Spider Man Two. Mm-hmm. And if we see Tony McGuire. He probably will be too, and they're gonna retcon kind of. They're gonna, they're gonna Spider-Man erase Spider Man Three. Kind of. I kind of like the idea of like he's old Peter Parker. That's what they should do, because you get to see like Tony McGuire being old and a lot of fans will be like, "Oh, love my gosh, it's he's truly reprising his role. He doesn't have to like have baby face anymore and right. whatever." Right. That's why I would more hope. Um... There's no real, there's no real Amazing Spider-Man reference in this trailer, except for maybe Lizard. Barely, you see a shadow back there. Yeah, and he's like big. I mean, we know that Jamie Foxx is coming back, <clears throat> supposedly as maybe a not blue Electro because people hated that. Right. I didn't care, and I still don't care. Um. So I mean, what are our feelings about the current Spider-Man movies, though? Oh, I love all of them. Right, I liked. Homecoming a lot. I really love Homecoming. Far From Home, I've been really lukewarm about. For okay. me, Far From Home, the most interesting part, the most interesting part of that movie was the last post credit scene. That was like, okay. <laughs> Jonah Jameson giving away Spider-Man, whatever. It's like, oh! But... <laughs> yeah, I like Homecoming. We're back, by the way. Um, I like Homecoming. I like Far From Home. I think... I, I remember saying that I like. What I'm what I'm wondering is is this the end of a trilogy? Because there because there was the whole thing with Sony. It was like, oh, no more Spider Man movies. Then Tom Holland begged. He begged Kevin Feige when he was drunk so one night or something. No, you he begged. He got on the phone with Bob Iger. Oh, was that it? He was like, oh, I need Spider Man. And then Bob Iger I said can't. that he cried on the phone. <laughs> this can't be it. And and then they they were like, all right, we'll do. Did they say one more movie though? That's why I was trying One more to movie, and then a cameo. And then that leaves room for more? I don't know. Because, yeah, that makes it sound like this is the last one, which is kind of sad. I expect one more movie with Tom Holland, and then the cameo <clears throat> of, in Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, of maybe um, Tobey Maguire maybe in there or something. <laughs> Doctor Strange goes to that reality. Because Sam Raimi's the director of... Multiverse of Madness. Right. So maybe they'll go back to there. But I don't know. Honestly, this trailer... It looks heavy Doctor Strange. Like, it's not just, like, a single cameo. It looks like there's going to be a lot of... Well, do- you think is gonna- Doctor Strange is going to be in, like, every movie? Well, they're going to have... Do you think they're going to have a new Spider-Man movie without a new mentor for the movie? I'm just saying that there's a lot... But even, like, with Iron Man, there's, like, not a whole lot of Iron Man in Homecoming. Yeah. It's like he has a couple appearances. Yeah. Doctor Strange, he looks like he's going to be around a lot. Yes. <clears throat> Based on the trailer. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting to think if this is a conclusion for I, Spider-Man. I, I hope not. It won't be. It won't be. Because I feel like... Do you think he's going to... Do you think everybody's going to not know by the end? Of, do you think he will succeed in erasing everybody's memory of him being Spider-Man by the end of this? What Or maybe not succeed, but he chooses... I feel like they're going to have to. I mean, oh, it's man. kind of hard to believe that there would be the MCU where everybody knows that he's Spider-Man. But everybody knew that he was Iron Man. I don't know. I feel like it's a bit different. And that Steve Rogers is got, Captain America. Spider-Man has to have kind of a more secret identity. I don't think it works if you have that. It's like, what if Batman doesn't have a secret identity? What if Green Arrow didn't have one? It adds more to but the he character. does, though. It adds more he to the character. He does lose his secret identity. No, no. Um... It, it kind of takes part more of the character, I think, if you don't give him a secret Is name. he going to make a deal with Mephisto? No. <laughs> no. Because that's a thing, though, in a comic book. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, no. I'm sure you watched that You're on that the stuff. Mephisto train? When did you get on that train? <laughs> You've been making fun of it I'm since, just wondering. since one division. You I never heard, really thought Because I heard about that, I'm like, another Mephisto <laughs> wonder? Another yeah. thing about wondering if Mephisto's around? We have been making fun of Mephisto things? Because we, we, we both knew on this podcast. Crazy. That... 
that we're not we're not seeing Mephisto in one division. And then people said in Falcon with Associate, like, are you crazy? What have you? <laughs> when, when, what point of this? Oh, yes, those, those flag smashers, they really work with Mephisto a whole lot. Uh, crazy. Pretty crazy. Yeah, we we are always on the same page of Mephisto, not in any of this. There was something about seeing Doc Ock, though, up here. Hello, Peter. Hello. That was just like, it did, it did strike nostalgia and made me hopeful for the movie, but I'm wondering if it's just nostalgia that's like, Oh, this is cool. I have a hot take about the trailer. Yeah, I wonder if you erase any of those, any of the references to the old movies, would this look as interesting? Or is it just Doctor Strange plus Spider-Man movie? I have a hot take for the trailer that I've been waiting to say. But I did not think this trailer was very good. I did not think the trailer was very good. I think it lowered my expectations to the movie. Really? Yes. Tom Holland did say it was only the tip of the iceberg, this trailer. Okay. Which, who knows how that's supposed to mean. But I'm worried that Tom Holland's going to be robbed. You're not explaining why you were not interested in the trailer, though. I, I was just about to say. It's because I'm worried that Tom Holland's going to be robbed by, like, look at this character that's, that's dead. Remember this character that's dead? Look at this character that's also dead. Now they're all alive again. Is that what the trailer is about? That's not really anything about the trailer. Well, if we get, like, Green Goblin, if we get Doc Ock, if we get Jamie Foxx back... You're just talking about yeah, yeah, returning true. other universe characters. Yes, I don't know if that needs all these characters. Well, yeah, I'm yeah. It's like because right now it seems like there's gonna be like three f- plots almost. Yes, it's there's like, like the whole heavy. oh people know who I am now plot. Yeah. There's the oh I want to erase everybody's mind with Doctor Strange plot. Uh huh. And there's gonna be this whole oh there's all these other Spider Man villains and Spider Man maybe around. Yes. Which feels like a bit of a bit of a Spider-Man three, and I would I wouldn't know, but maybe a S- Amazing Spider-Man two. Amazing Spider-Man two is kind of like that too. Only right. think about Amazing Spider-Man which 2. kills Spider-Man sequels. <laughs> it's that syndrome where there's a lot ton of villains suddenly, and you don't really have time or interest in all of them. <laughs> it gets all muddled up, right? Amazing, Sp- which is a worry that I have. Amazing Spider-Man 2 just tried to cram so much stuff in. But they're obviously leading to the Sinister Six. And be like, you've seen all these villains before, and you're going to see them all alive again. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like there has to be this one central villain that's like, I am bringing these people back. And if it's Mephisto, then I'm going <laughs> to cry. It's Dormammu. It's Dormammu, yeah. I don't know. Still no... We- I want more Dormammu. <laughs> yeah, there needs to be a more centralized villain that's like, this is the guy behind it all. And I don't think it's gonna be Doc Ock. Certainly, it's gonna be Sandman, like people are saying. I thought I saw Spider Man in like a black suit, in like the Spider Man Three black suit for a minute. But I, more people were saying that it's like his like sorcerer suit. Yeah, something like that. Which, okay, I'm not sure why he needs a sorcerer suit. To be uh-huh. honest, I think it would be interesting if like he's going through, like he's he ends up in the worlds of these other universes and he ends up like in the costume like oh suddenly he's in black suit Spider-Man or yeah. he's in you know suddenly he's wearing the amazing Spider-Man costume you know? yeah. and it's weird, those sort of weird things if he's actually falling through these other universes mm-hmm. and it ends up in his or something something weird like that right yeah. I mean it was only a teaser trailer that'd be I, weird I'm still pumped for this movie more than anything else even though Shang-Chi looks really good Shang-Chi yes I'm I'm just a bit more hesitant on it. And we liked the latest Eternals trailer. Cause it had, oh, it had, I don't... I'm still not... What do you mean? It had Eternals. Icarus with his golden light... I don't golden care. I don't care. That didn't, that didn't get me back in. And it might do X-Men because Emergence. We have that theory. Ah, uh, that's... it's It still doesn't excite me. I mean, shang is the big one for me. Okay. And this is coming out December. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yes. Should be cool. To say the least, it should have some interesting things. Um, I, nostalgia isn't going to please me here because I didn't grow up with maybe a lot of those movies. So I didn't watch. I yeah, I didn't watch them in full until way later in my life. So I'm not going to have that same nostalgia feel. I'd almost have more nostalgia about X Men. I'll feel more nostalgia if it was the Amazing Spider-Man. Based off of this trailer, but supposedly they might do that though. Yeah. Will Gwen Stacy be alive? Who knows? I say they should just like, yeah, she's alive and Spider-Gwen now. That'd be fun. I don't know. 
I don't know. That's what I said. But who knows? I, I just hope it's still Tom Holland's movie. And that's super clear. Mm. That's what I'm worried. And also, there needs to be a new villain that's like super fun and interesting. Mm. And I don't want to just be returning villains that we've already seen die. Sure. That's that's my concern. Um, but who do you think is your favorite Spider-Man villain that we've seen on the big screen? Spider-Man villain? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I like Green Goblin. I like William Defoe's Green Goblin. But I do you think we're know. finally gonna see? Scorp- That's also a whole different era. Do you think we're gonna see Vulture and Scorpion? In this uh, movie? Vulture would be cool. Definitely not Scorpion. Really? But he was in the jail. He if he jail. is, he'll like be an opening scene where it's like they just have sp- they need somebody for Spider Man to beat up real fast. You think they're gonna pull a Amazing Spider Man two and then start the movie with Rhino? and then end the movie with Rhino? In his Rhino I mean, suit. I'm even talking about like Batchock, how what they do with Batchock the Leaper in Winter Soldier. Oh, that's more what I'm talking about. You, okay, you know you have your opening action sequence that you need some sort of villain, minor villain or something to beat up, uh-huh. and that's maybe that's who Spider-Man beats up. And later on, you see Miles Morales fighting him in like another beginning action scene of the first episode of a TV show that's based around him. Is that what you're saying? Let's get into Dune. We'll get into Dune real fast. You saw my reference, though, right? <laughs> I don't care. You don't care? I was making a Falcon Winter Soldier reference. I know, but I don't care. I thought it was dumb. So, we'll get into Dune. So, you've never watched Dune before. I've watched I've watched the movie once. And over this summer, this, over this last year, I've been reading the book. The first book, Dune. It's crazy universe. <laughs> it's like crazy. <laughs> so explain to me what the story is oh, of Dune no. you can't, 1984. You can't, you can't ask me this. No, I have to though. So they've sand planet, right? Someone's waiting for a messiah character to go help bring life back to the planet Dune. And everybody wants the spice on the planet Dune. So they're all mining it at which damages the people that already live there. And this guy needs to destroy all the other house Caden or something like that. Harkonnen. Harkonnen. And Free Dune, basically. Is that bad? Yeah, that's really bad. Is it? Pretty bad, yeah. I think it's totally fine. No, it's like not even close. It's like barely close. That's, that's like you would have gotten like a D for that for that explanation. Oh really? You you explain it because maybe we watch different movies. So you have House of Trees is being uh politically maneuvered to take over the planet of Dune, which is where you didn't even mention the spice. I did. No, you didn't. I did. Uh barely. But Dune is where the spice is harvested. And when they take control of Dune their rivals, the House Harkonnen, with the help of the Emperor. Uh, what are they, what are they going to do to them? Um, Harkonnen's going to kill House Atreides. Yeah. Um, because they have a rivalry, but a tra- you know, the Duke Atreides has a son, Paul, who's just super, who's a super person. <laughs> He's like the product of like selective breeding. Which uh-huh. they, get, they like take like two seconds to say in the movie. Uh-huh. I don't know why I'm explaining it. I know the movie. But uh, clearly I don't. What questions do you have? Because you had some questions during the movie. I'm like, um. Mm. Is the pug in the book? No, I have no clue about that dog. Because that's a pretty cute dog. They were like flying around and he's just like panting. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Cute overlord. Overload, guys. So cool. So cool. You're like not explaining the story. Talk about the story. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, talk about the sticking story. That's what we're supposed to talk about. Why is that about. man like basically like a slug that just flies around? 
Oh, that, that's even descriptive enough. That's even <laughs> not. That's not even descriptive. We're talking about the Baron the Harkonnen, guy. the merchant guy. Merchant guy. What are you talking about? The merchant guild has that weird slime slug. No, in yeah, the no. You're talking about the space guild. Yeah. So yeah, so you're talking about the space guild. They have a monopoly on all space travel because they're the ones that fold space, which is their FTL. What do you care? Stuff. Like, like if that's like your boss, at you work for the space guild, and that's your boss, your higher up. Are you like, I can't take you seriously. No, because that's actually, that's a human that has done, I think, so much. I, I think. He's gotten treated by so much spice. He constantly has to breathe spice. That he's evolved into that sort of creature. And those creatures are the ones that are able to perceive space-time in a way to actually fold space and do fast and light speed travel. There's some versions of this, um, of this movie that I think have a, another prologue that explains like the history of of this universe, and they talk about what was it called? I think it's the Butlerian Jihad, which is where like all computers basically were destroyed in the universe. Like any computer that would be able to do that sort of processing were destroyed. You know, and robots and all that. So that's why there's no robots or, like, real computers for any of this. They can't use yeah. that. Because it's, like, basically against ethics and all that. And that's why the Space Guild have... Because they, they use the spice to for space travel. To know how to do space travel. And there's other people that do it so that they're, I don't know, computer. You know, they're, they're really smart. Those are the Mentats, which you saw. There's so much weird stuff in this, in this universe. There's so much in it. Yeah, it's giving me like... Some... So, I, they, I think they described it as that was like a phase three navigator or something. Yeah. It was giving me some like medieval vibes. Like, how do we put medieval times in space? Yeah, it's very much a... What would you call it? A feudal society, right? Yeah. Like, how do we make... Like, I could sense some King Arthur in this story. Oh, sure. And maybe drinking the water of life was more so him getting his Excalibur. Uh, are you able to explain what the water of life is? It's from the bit. It's part of the snakes. This is all. I guess we should also say this is all spoilers for upcoming Dune, probably as well, because it's going to have a lot of the same stuff you'd imagine. Yeah. <laughs> right? I've, I've seen some people say, though, that you... this Dune is a lot more book accurate. And the upcoming Dune looks like well, they say that doing its own thing. They, I guess, okay. If you're saying people say that, this also has a lot of stuff not in the book, like at all. So, like, a big part of Dune, I think, is how the combat works, which is stuff that confuses me. Because they describe it as there's a pretty set system of combat off of Dune, where it's all based on those shields. So everybody has personal shields that you can't shoot through. Or if you shoot something at it, you shoot, like, a laser at it to, like, deflects it back at you. Except for Duck in Idaho. Oh, hold on. No, hold on. Because, yeah, in... Because, yeah, in... uh, Yeah, because that's... In combat off of Dune, they all use shields like that. And, like, energy weapons that you would use on that don't work, and bullets can't pass through those because they're high velocity. You need to, like... When you're fighting hand to hand like that, you actually need to move like slow through the shields, almost like a droidica shield, right? How uh-huh. you roll the, the droid buzzers. Remember when Ahsoka was teaching uh-huh. Lux how to roll? The, the, they do that. They have to like move their when they fight. They have to learn to move their knives slowly through a shield, a personal shield. But in this movie, people are using only like a few people use their shields, which is kind of weird to me. Um, in the book they also talk about how you can't really use shields on dune because that's what because it attracts worms but i think people still in the initial i think in the city they're still able to use it because worms can't get there or something um so everybody's just using guns but also people have guns just everywhere in this world it's and duncan like. had Right. right, and Duncan d- dies. Duncan dies. He gets shot with and a bullet while he had a shield on. Yeah, and so I don't know what you're fashion. talking about. Right, I know. Which was like, what's the point of the shields? <laughs> I don't know what the point of these shields are. If they you shoot a bullet through it somehow, I don't. I don't know Dude, what that's equivalent about. of 
Because, yeah, that's not... Indiana Jones <laughs> shooting the ninja who's just throwing a sword at Right, him. that's not how he dies in <laughs> stinking book. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So, yeah. Like, yeah, they don't do much with the shields. <coughs> Sorry. So, yeah, they don't use the shields very often, which makes sense when they're out in the desert, at least. Yeah. And that, But they still, I'm pretty sure, use knives and stuff. But also, in this movie... So, as opposed to the book, another change is that... So, in here, they have these weapons using sound. You, like, talk into a microphone, and you have a speaker that you, like, hold towards something, and it shoots, like, sound or something. Yeah. That's not all in the book. That's, like, not even close to a thing. They call it a part of the Weirding Way, which, in the book, the Weirding Way is just, like... It's, like, a martial art more than anything. Uh Uh-huh. But here it's just like a gun. <laughs> they just, which I don't understand the point of it when they have actual guns and stuff and atomic weapons. Um, it's weird. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of weird. So I don't know how people can say that's more how it's accurate because it doesn't feel super accurate a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, they also pass over a lot of things. Um. I want you're supposed to talk more about this, Joey, because you're supposed to be the one. You know more about it. this universe than I do. I don't no, know. Oh, but you're supposed to be asking questions and stuff and going through the story. I have to go through the story. Yeah, you have to go through the story because I know the story. Joey. Well, let me just tell you this: this movie has a great cast, as in they have a Cylon who's a traitor. Surprising, surprising. <laughs> Very cool. That Doctor Yui. Yeah. So the, his deal is that he was that the doctor. Why he couldn't have been? Why people wouldn't ever expect him to be the traitors? Because you saw he had like a diamond on his forehead or something. Yeah. <clears throat> he was like specially conditioned uh-huh. in some sort of imperial institute to uh, be s- super loyal. Like he can't break his loyalty, which is weird. Then in this universe, to have the one person who is supposed to have that training be the traitor. Yeah. Which is kind of weird to me. It's like, so that didn't really mean anything. Nothing. <laughs> it was weird. That's weird to me. So yeah, that's a thing. Or they just got some other guy just had the tattoo on him and he never actually went through the training. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Uh, keep going. Um. It, so besides the Cylon, who I feel like is in everything I watch now, is there's a Cylon. Why are you just talking? I want you don't talk about just the cast. Talk about the story. I thought Paul was a very likable character in this movie. Really? <laughs> yes. I thought he was very... He felt very much like a cool, fun leader type. Really? <laughs> you disagree? I think he's a robot in every version so far. He has, like, no... I don't... He's just, like, no... How did you feel about the internal mo- monologues, too? That's a big part of this, too. The in, Everybody has an internal monologue at some point. Like, this is something that should be remained in books. <laughs> right? Yeah, they tried to do in, like, the original Blade Runner, I think, too. But they got rid of that in, like, a director's cut and stuff. <laughs> it's, like, it's always, like, it's silly to me. <laughs> stuff like that you should that should st- stay in books. Right. You have to communicate that information in other ways. Yeah. What they're suspecting and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> it's so The jarring. biggest problem I had for, for me was there, there was just kind of a lot of weird time jumps. Yeah, there's a lot of time. That jumps. was like just really weird. It's like, so Paul and his blue-eyed girlfriend, Charlie, are, yeah. yeah, are like, they were just absolutely in love, and then it's like, well, we like to see this romantic relationship play out, right? Can you like, like have us a reason why we like these two together so much? It seems like <laughs> it's kind of similar though in the book too, in terms of that. Is it? Kind, kind, pretty much. So like they're picked up by the tribe of the Fremen, who are the people native to Dune. They're uh-huh. picked up by that, and he meets her. Like she's like the only female that he ever talks to in that in that group. And they get brought back, and then there's pretty much a time jump after his mom drinks the water of life and is able to convert that into real water and stuff. Yeah, there's pretty much a time jump, and he's like, he's like super tactician guy, and he's like basically ready to become the new leader or whatever and like they have a kid by that point yeah it's (laughs) it's it's like whoa (laughs) that's huge jump (laughs) yeah just so fast that's almost the point where i wonder if they'll 
break up the two next the new movies yes which is like around then (laughs) please you know i'm still trying to figure out because because yeah for the new movie right they're gonna break it up into parts yes i'm trying to figure out where do you think they would break it up into parts though i would say where house of trades falls on dune because that looks from based on the trailers that's a lot of the trailer feels like when they're under attack right and they're like yeah. trying to and everything afterwards is part two but that's a bit confusing for me because i feel like in the book that's like all act one zendaya would have no role in this movie right because yeah in the book they break it up at least in the version that i read it's broken up into three acts and like the fall i think when they're when it ends up with uh paul and jessica his mom are out in the desert and he sees the moon or whatever uh, right before he meets the Fremen. I think that's end of act one right there. Yeah. Yeah. So to end it right there, you'd still have like two thirds of the movie left and there's a lot of time jumps in that yet. Yeah. I feel like, cause I forget if in the trailer there's like at the end of the last trailer, he's like in that sort of gold armor, right? And it, his visor moves up and you see Paul, right? Okay. I'm wondering if he's fighting with the Fremen at that moment or what that fight is. Yeah, I don't know. Because that would have to be later on. I don't think I'm right. Just to make that clear, I bet they're... They're going to save the Water for Life for part two. Mm, Water for Life? Water for Life, yes. (laughs) Um, Water of Life for part two. Um, Probably going to have Zendaya in there a bit more. (laughs) How do you feel? So... You like Paul. You said you liked Paul. I like Paul, yeah. <laughs> to me, in the book and the mo- in a bit in the movie, too, he's a robot. He's just like, I have plans and plans and plans, and ev- I have foreseen everything. <laughs> and somehow, I'm just, I am the Messiah. Which is why, when you say that Chani in Dune Part 2 is going to be more or less the main character, that almost relieves me. Because <laughs> Paul is not much of a character in like the third act of the book especially he's like by that point he has become like he can foresee he can see across space and time and stuff yeah it's like whoa what's going on he's just like super chosen one and stuff yeah and it's kind of crazy so but how do you feel about uh his sister oh paul's sister yeah hate it (laughs) Do you understand the deal with that? With what happened with her? That she's just like her mother. Like, first off, let's let's just go talk about this. First. We cut away from his mother for a long time. And we cut back. Like, she's bald and like kind of like a witch now. Well, yeah. She's become... Because you had the reverend mother for the emperor, right? Uh-huh. She's become the reverend mother for the Fremen, I think. Which is... Which, how yeah. do you choose that? Hmm? How do you choose to be the reverend mother? Do you just smoke a lot of that spice? No, you drink the water of life, and if you when you drink it, if you can convert it, you can manipulate the molecules with your mind into water. That's when you become the Reverend Mother. That's crazy. It's crazy. Like they're drinking, I'm like, and suddenly she's talking about like manipulating molecules of this poison, which comes from the worms, and turning it into water. It's like what and supposedly she can end up doing that when she does that after she does that she can do that with any poison that so she that's something that she mentions that oh i don't have to ever worry about poison again because that's a way of getting through a person's shield is by poisoning them. sure uh because that's a big part of all these things like you see the uh i just thought it was funny how they cut away also <laughs> why is the daughter like that too the sister. so yeah so the daughter so since she was pregnant with paul's sister uh, when she drank the water, it turned her into, like, a monster, practically. Yeah. <laughs> like, she, I think she inherited all of her mother's memories and stuff. That's what I understood in the nature. book. Yeah. Gr- weird. <laughs> Which Can I think imagine? also allowed her to be in the minds of other Reverend Mothers or Benny Gesserit or something. And, that she, yeah, that made, so she's, like, a freak. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> she's also a super freak. And it's like, what the hell? Yeah. Um. What else? There was something else I was gonna mention. Um, We're gonna mention the pug because that's no, no one cares about that. Um. Duncan Idaho a bit more. 
Yeah, there's no. You know, American Duncan runs on and Duncan. Okay. They were back. So how'd you feel about them riding the worms? <laughs> riding the worms? It, f- it felt nothing to me. <laughs> I felt nothing. I'm like, I hope it's some grandiose milestone achievement. Maybe that's how the movie ends, is he rides the worm for the first time. But I felt nothing. That'd be interesting, sure. I forget if he does that before he gets... I think he does that like right before he gets his like super mega powers. Where he can see across space and time. Oh, before he drinks the water of life? Right. Well, he does that before in, in this movie, so. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, he does it before. So maybe that's how you end it. You have Gurney Halleck is Patrick Stewart. He does a good enough job. I feel like if this movie is very similar to the to the reboot, you're marketing the, this reboot wrong. Because they're, they're kind of marketing it more, of, more as a... Um, battle epic story right Mm -hmm. they should market more of a Shakespearean thriller yeah (laughs) politic thriller which I think is a bad move because you're (laughs) gonna get a lot of casual fans that come into the theater and say oh yeah let's go watch some cool battles Right. And they come in there and they're just talking about... Well, they've got to get the Star Wars people in. You know, they've got to get the Star Wars audience yeah. hooked onto and it, they right? need to get... That has to be what they're going for. But instead you got, like, the, the witch girls that think, put your hand in the box. <laughs> put your hand <laughs> in the box. They did market that, though. They did. That was the first thing in the that, trailer. They did do that. Because <laughs> that's the first scene in the book, too, is that they do the hand... They do the box. <laughs> yes, which is cool. But is it cool? What? For me, it's cool because I, I, I went and expected watching that this. initially. I'm like, what the hell is this scene? <laughs> what is this? And then reading the book, I'm like, all right, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and then re-watching the movie, I'm like, oh, I get the scene now after seeing it in the trailer too. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like, this is weird. <laughs> yeah. It's such a weird story. <laughs> Just they have, this whole thing. If they have to float, like two floating mutated gross people right you got the spacers guild and you have um, space guild I, space, I don't know what it, is. Oh, it might be spacers spacers choice once when you have the spacers guild okay and then you have the harkonnen you have the baron harkonnen who's just so fat that he needs things to levitate him and, he, and we first see him just plucking some pimples <laughs> it's so gross it's like, i love you my son it's like no he doesn't even have a son no 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 it was there like the other nephews, guy calling him yeah. his it was, I think it was his dad or something. His doctor? Yeah, I was like, I think he called him, like, son. I'm like, does this guy have a dad? I, I thought he was in charge. Yeah, he's in charge, yeah. I think he, he might have a dad still. I think that was just his doctor that was like, oh, you're so beautiful. That was just a sucking up to him. Yeah, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. <laughs> wow. And then he just floats around the room. They float around the room. <laughs> kills some boy. They kill some boy who's who's like a slave <laughs> who is trying to flowers, flowers into vases. <laughs> who's just like they're showing how brutal he is in the most just disgusting way. And he just puts his hand on his chest and just like so you just see start seeing blood and he's like he's just no effort. It's like did he just drain his? No, life didn't force? you see? They all have like because they put it on uh, the old Atreides like mentat. Okay. Pure guy, they all have like heart plugs or something that you can just pull out and it kills them, basically. Yeah. Which is not a thing in the. Again, not a thing in the book. Which would be weird, because who would want that? <laughs> it's real weird. Hey, you need to under- undergo the surgery where if somebody unplugs you from your chest, you die immediately. It's like, what the hell is this world? It's just. It's so jarring just seeing this some fat man with, I think, like bags of water. Like the best way I can describe it for people who haven't seen us. Remember the last Jedi, where Finn was wearing that bag of water suit. Oh yeah, the... picture that, but not Finn, in the disgusting human being <laughs> with wars all over his face, just floating around the room, just flying, yeah. and no explanation of why. Obviously, spice somehow. How do you feel about the death of Duke Leto Atreides? Sucks. <laughs> I want him to be in the whole movie. Yeah, he's not gonna. <laughs> that's it's, like it's sad, that's like pretty accurate. I mean, <laughs> the book too. it's the mentor role, you know. Yeah, so that he barely does anything in this no, movie though. He doesn't. He just like he shows off that hey, I'm pretty good. I preferred to save the people rather than the spice off of this harvester, right? Yeah, and that was it. And then he died. Yeah, I mean, hopefully they give him 
more time in the reboot that's like, this is why I'm so cool. Right? Mm-hmm. I hope so, yeah. Because I don't want the whole thing to be about book versus this movie, but he does have more time in the book in that's terms cool. of that's talking good. and stuff. And again, if this is like going to be split up into two parts, hopefully they can elaborate more on the parts yeah, on please. actually developing the characters and stuff, right? Yeah, I. That's what I see. Why they want to break it up into two, two parts, mm-hmm. but you know I disagree. They should just make it one longer movie. No, please elaborate more. Please just just give us more stuff. <clears throat> Don't just say, and Paul and Zendaya's character. What's her name? Ching Chang. Chani. Chani. Chani actually like fall in love and you see some fun chemistry between but again, the actor they, like, and the actress really fall in love in the book they just uh, it's just like you're the first I had dreams of you and therefore I fall in love with you in the reboot they seem like they're gonna fall in love so I don't know it's felt I mean it's the same thing where it's like I'm having dreams of this woman <laughs> of yes. this girl in my stinking dreams I, I okay well, and then just... I'll see her and I'll be instantly I need to have babies <laughs> With you. I expected a, a more different story. Mm-hmm. For sure. Because I going into this, if you would have told me what Dune is, I said I would have said a bunch of warring houses, right? Sure. And Paul is more so just a side character? No. No. <laughs> no, he's... No. There's a reason that the second part of the Dune trilogy or saga is Dune Messiah. <laughs> that's, like yeah. the, that's the name for the second book. <laughs> yeah. Is Dune Messiah, yeah. Yeah. Like, he's legitimately, yeah, supposed to be the Messiah of the Fremen religion. And then, I guess they're gonna, he, like, they don't get too much into it in here, but how he has visions and he wants, he wants to prevent, like, a uh, this sort of jihad crusade across the universe that the Fremen are gonna do. Yeah. And he knows that, but kind of by the end he realizes that there's not much gonna stop it because even if he dies in like the final duel they're gonna call him a martyr and continue on and if he survives they're gonna just do it in his name still and so yeah they don't really they don't even I think there's an alternate ending for this movie as well that you could look up that's directly from the book that they don't mention how Paul becomes emperor how he marries the emperor's uh daughter not Ch- changi no but he but he, he marries uh the emperor's daughter irwin but irwin but irwin or something i don't remember dude lord of the rings but is like but then tells chani that i'm not gonna love her at all i'm gonna have kids with you still <laughs> that you're gonna be <laughs> weird <laughs> just, that yeah she's like not gonna get anything from me <laughs> weird <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna bear my sons and whatever you don't need to do that but that's his way out of the throne though is that you can do, nah, you have so much power you can, you can he do needs whatever. to do it legitimately though does he i guess i don't know that's no, a part doesn't. of the political this whole thing <laughs> the whole emperor and stuff sucks you could just kill the emperor and just i'm taking the throne <clears throat> no he could be oh. no but that's i don't think that's i think he, he could be all for storm cloak and then shout the emperor to death, taking his place. Nah, because then you might get a civil war and stuff. Yeah, you need, I happen. think you need to do it legitimately somehow. And then, uh, cause do you know? Cause I don't know if you caught it, but how Jessica wasn't Duke Leto's wife either. She was his concubine or whatever. And that I think Leto's final regret was not marrying her and making okay. her his yeah. wife. So I think it's some sort of mirror of that. It's like Paul's, you know, I think Jessica more in the book is like sad that Paul won't follow his heart in whatever way and marry Shani. Which sucks. Do that, please. Kind of reboot, reboot. Listen to our podcast. <laughs> I don't know. Because <clears throat> I think the whole book Who's is the... written by the princess or Who? whatever, by the oh. princess that he marries too. Uh, the one that just he doesn't care about, right? Exactly. Th- this all at that point of view is like this is how my my husband never gives me attention. He's too busy off. Like the section, like between chapters, like it's all like quotes, like uh, of Muad'Dib, which is Paul's like fremen name, you know, sure. by Princess Irulan. Okay, or whatever. <clears throat> 
which um would paul let her have like people on the side though i don't think so no no women don't get that right in like shakespearean time no shakespearean i don't know just i mean feudal feudal yeah medieval yeah uh what else in the movie so so yeah roll through the characters that you want to see more of that you hope is our elaborated on please give us more changi chani chani it's C H A N I. Give us. I love Paul. But, well, I don't love Paul. He's a <laughs> he's a good character. I hope I hope that they make him somewhat more human in at least the beginning. <laughs> at least the beginning. Dude, he's a cool. He, he he plays a cool leader pretty well. Going out of the movie, I'm like, you know what? That's a fun leader character. You know what I mean, a fun hero type. Fun though, I don't. Like Kirk is a fun leader. Like, I can feel my. I see this myself a... being Paul. <laughs> can you though? Enough. Just yes. emotionless. He's not emotionless. He's emotionless. Yeah. Which is why we need to give him more time with Changi. You're still saying it. It's well, like how, you're saying it wrong on purpose. How 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 am I supposed to say it? Cha. Cha. Ni. Cha ni. Sure. Cha ni. Sure. Give give more love stuff with Cha ni and Paul. And then everything will be fine. <laughs> okay. That's what I want. It's just weird. <laughs> That's my biggest complaint about the movie. Really? Not the... I don't know. <laughs> what, not the floating man that's just going around? <laughs> no. <don't> no. <laughs> no. Keep that in. <laughs> or just how... I don't know. Who, who's I, directing I, the reboot? <clears throat> it's Dennis Villeneuve. Dennis who did, Villeneuve. He did Blade Runner. Blade Runner 2049. Yeah. Which I love. That's like, yeah, that's one of my favorite movies almost. Yes. If he gets rid of the pug or the floating <clears throat> flying man. What do you mean get rid of? boycotting this you movie. You can't get rid of something that's not in the original material. What do you mean? The man's floating around. Hmm? The man is floating around in the book, you said. Yeah. I mean, they've already shown him, though, in the trailer as well. And he's floating around. He is? Yeah. I, it's been a while since he I watched He was in, the like, trailer. the first trailer because he was... In the new movie, I think it, is his name Stellan Star- Skarsgård, uh, Doctor Selvig, okay. from Marvel stuff. He's playing Baron Harkonnen, and he was rising out of like a pool of like oil or something in the trailers. Weird. Do you remember that? Weird. <laughs> yeah. Probably not oil. It's probably spice. No, it was. It looked like black tar oil. Who knows what spice something. is? Is it like what is spice? Like material wise, it's like a. It's like spice. It's like an element. It's like spice. You just drizzle some spice on your sure. taco. Yeah, sure. Is that? It's like dust. Yeah. It's dust. It's like a fine. It could be a powder. I think it's like a powder. Yeah. That you can put in and turn into whatever the hell you want. Is it like yeah, salt? It's like something that you could like throw in the air and it's particles and stuff. Okay. What's the relationship between the worms? And the spice. I think it's a part of when... Because they start off... I think it's something that the worms might... Before they're worms, when when they're like... I don't know. When they're like... At some point in their life cycle, before they become like real worms, I think they're produced. I think. Okay. They don't really get into it in the book. I thought. I think I read some... Or watch some other video on it. Now I was like trying to figure out what the hell this world was. <laughs> okay. Um, it was something like that. At some point in the worm's life cycle, they produce it. Okay. Um. So maybe it's more so like worm poop. Maybe I don't know. Ooh. So they got the big things in this world is spice. Um, worm worm poop. And worm pee with the mm-hmm. water of life and the spice. Sure. Whoa. Wild. Um. Yeah. What other parts? What if you put the worms on a different planet? Would they produce spice? How would you do that? Just take a worm. No, you can't do that. It's huge, Joey. Worms huge. You could clone it. I don't know if they do clone. Oh, they have no computers. We're gonna do do download a mine. It's like when the mentats like, sorry, mentat, you have to 
somehow analyze the blood of this worm. That makes no sense. Yeah, I don't know how they clone things. They, they probably can't. Right. Yeah. And again, and how, but also like, for most of this be, world... Like, you're going to plug in... Like, would the men that have to, like, lick the blood? I have no clue. I mean, they have microscopes and stuff, probably. They still have some bits of technology. Yeah, but no computers. So you're like, sure. well, that looks really cool in the microscope. You have to remember all this. But you also have to remember that... Uh, there are people that can convert the molecules of poison into water. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. So... <laughs> and there's also a floating slug of the Spacers Guild who's in charge. You can bend space and time. <laughs> right. So people can do some wild things in this universe. And float around the room. They can do some wild things. <laughs> I'm looking at if they show whatever phase navigators like that in the movie, what yeah. they'll look like. <laughs> yeah. I mean... I feel like oh, man. the villain is just... I was more so when going into this, I was trying to compare it to original Battlestar Galactic. Okay. Which is, I don't think it's the perfect way. Mm-hmm. But it's like the same time period. Sure. Post. You know, it's a post-Star Wars Yeah, movie. a post-Star Wars. You got your Battlestar Galactic. You got your Dune. You got whatever. Your Star Trek kind of, not really. Movie. I'm also. We're not talking about story. In terms of movie, this is post Star Wars, yes. so you can tell how the uh, they mentioned the Sardo Sardo car. It's, it's after Return of the Jedi. They talk about the Sardo car terror troops that the Emperor has. Yeah, they don't get too much into that, but how those troops were like they were like more or less they were prisoners on the Emperor's prison planet, which mm-hmm. is like a super harsh environment. Yeah, and then they'll like recruit from there. Yeah, and that's kind of where they say. The Fremen would be an excellent rival for them because they're also born and live on a super harsh world. Yeah. Well, the thing about Harkonnen, though, is that I wouldn't, like, expecting this Baltar character. <laughs> it's really, like, how's this guy in charge? Mm-hmm. But also, like, super fun. Okay. Maybe a bit more empathetic. More so wants to rule. No, there's no fun in this universe, Joe. No fun. There's no, no fun. fun in this universe. Nobody smiles the comic in this re- The comic relief was the pug. Which, do you think that like, some guy just showed up on set with this pug? He's like, can we put this in the movie? He's like, sure. This will be the comic relief. Dude, pugs in the future, man. How far in the future is this? They say in the beginning, it's, the, it's like past the year 10,000. Something like that. That's what they said, yeah. It was like... 10,194 or something like that. Yeah, so wild future. <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, it's to the point where humans can evolve into giant, into weird <laughs> slug floating guys. Yeah. <laughs> and that they can convert water <laughs> into molecules and stuff. Right? It's a point where humans I'm, can I'm live. I'm rubbing my face. Humans can I'm live. I'm rubbing my face all the time. Yeah, where humans have evolved have started to evolve into crazy stinking creatures and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it's weird. It's a weird world, man. It's a weird world. Yeah. Um, super in-depth uh, with all of that's doing. Um, but, yeah, even here they don't mention a few other things in terms of the relationship between House Atreides and Harkonnens and stuff. And, like, parts of the Benny Gesserit plots and what they do as well. They mentioned, yeah, how they were, how the Benny Gesserit manipulating bloodlines to create their chosen one, the Kwisatz Haderach or whatever. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that they don't get into that I wonder if they will in the new movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what, so, we were gonna we were gonna talk about what characters we want to see more of. You said Paul, and then we got totally sidetracked. Just like start listing them off, like Paul. You want I'm to trying to remember her name. Okay, I want to say it right. Okay, it's Chen. Is that right? Chen Chi. Chani. 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 It's Chani. You're so dumb. Shut up. Shut up. It's Chani. I want to see more of Chani for sure because she's just there to be the love interest. I think in this movie, and for no chemistry to be done between. Her and Paul. So. Yeah, it's a. I mean, yeah, that's about as close as MJ and Peter Parker, though, in Far From Home. What? No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Because they're fun together. Not really. They're walking though. on the bridge. They're like a little. They have nothing they in common. Have nothing, though. Nothing they have in nothing common. like that in this movie. They're like, I was going to kill you. No, Next she, time we see them together, literally in bed together. She feeds Why? him the water of life, Joe. <laughs> that's, that's later. That's later. Like, w- there's like no. There's just a complete joke. 
<laughs> you see Peter like truly curious like look it's MJ she's coming to our table what are you guys looking at oh but then they show him like their water supply and they're like oh and she's like tell me about your world that's just full of water <laughs> right remember Caladan they go from Caladan which just has like vast oceans to desert planet yeah <laughs> which is I would hate that that would be a sucky change. There was this one plant that I felt like was just basically ripped from the Matrix, kind of. I don't know. Okay, what it was, was it Harkonnen's plant? I think so. I think it was. Sure, okay. Which is kind of this black covered planet okay. with just black buildings <clears throat> and stuff. It's like, this is either sure. the Matrix or like. Blade Runner. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Like, future Gotham. Do you want to see? I'll, really no I'll go through the characters if you're not gonna go through them. Do you want to? See, what about? Do you want to see more Lilo Atreides? More Duncan, please. Duncan Idaho, yeah, gonna be Jason Momoa, which American runs on Duncan already based on the trailers. <laughs> There's gonna be more of them. Yeah, they got, they got Jason Momoa. What about uh, Gurney Halleck, who was Patrick Stewart's character, and is gonna be uh, Josh Brolin's character? I feel like kill him first. He doesn't die though. He doesn't, but I say you should kill him instead of Oscar <laughs> Isaac. Have him be the mentor. He was more uh, than the mentor. What about Jessica, Lady Jessica? Who's that? That's Paul's mom. No, I thought she was fine. Perfect amount. Uh, Maybe less. What about more of Fade Harkonnen, which is the younger Harkonnen? Who's oh, like, the blonde? Who's hair up blonde? Who's that no, guy? he was redhead for sure. Oh, but yeah, that him. guy, yeah. In the book, Did he has like by a, Dave Bautista. No, I don't know who's cast as him, because Dave Bautista, I'm pretty sure, is Raban who gets like decapitated in this movie. Yeah, so who's the f- white hair guy? Not white hair, blonde, like a super I'm blonde. Pretty sure it's red hair. Who he fights at the end of the movie? Right, who's like shirtless in one scene? It was weird. Was yeah. he? Oh yeah, that's something like, like that. fade. Hey, F-E-Y-D. It's just him in his underwear after coming out of this misty box. Yeah, forgot all about this scene. Thank, yeah. thank you for bringing that back up in the mind. Yeah, that's fade. Who is like more or less the Baron's heir, and has like his ambitions and yes. stuff. I will say this. I'm not sure if he's cast yet though. Oh, uh, there was this. Um, it's possible he hasn't been cast at all for this. There's this one thing about what was it Dunkirk where I was on my phone for like the first minute of the movie and I totally mm-hmm. missed like the introduction stuff where it's like for this storyline takes place in an hour this storyline takes over a week this storyline takes over a day and I was on my phone for all of that so I was so confused for the rest of the movie for a while so eventually I picked up the dots, dots. it's like oh I see <clears throat> wow but I had no idea what that meant because I wasn't paying attention I feel like the same rule applies here which if you missed the exposition there's a lot of exposition. You're not. You're not. You're not you almost it. need to watch because yeah, I said there was an. I've I've seen a version on like TV or something with another prologue beforehand that explained like the Butlerian Jihad, which is where they destroyed the machines and whatnot. Yeah. And there's a lot of there's a lot more exposition in the prologue. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. You might want to watch that. <laughs> I can't. Um. Uh, it's crazy don't look. don't go into it expecting Balsar Galactica. Which is what I went into. Yeah, sure. Because I thought about maybe more politics and diplomacy. This is more so. Uh, what about Stilgar? Who is the, like, the... He's the Fremen chief that finds them. He was fine. I mean, I don't know. I don't, Do you want to I don't have any strong... Though? I, think, I have no strong feelings I think, about a lot uh, of these characters. What's his name? Uh, Jack Sparrow. What's that? Oh my gosh. What's that him? actor's name? Is it him? Skyfall and stuff? Sparrow. Yeah. I think he's going to be that character in the new one. I think so. Crazy. Um, anyway, he's fine. But like I'm asking, do you want to see more of that character, though? I, I told you. I don't really feel like I'm in love with any of these characters besides Paul <laughs> and the Puck. That's kind of the two characters I really like. In Weird. This movie. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh, what was her name? Chain Chi? Oh my gosh! You're just Chani. the dumbest. It's Chani. It's Chani. You're the dumbest person. It's Chani. It's Chani. It's Chani. It's Chani. It's Chani. Yeah. Right? It's Chani. I fixed it. You're I got just it. like the dumbest person <laughs> ever. You got like you're Dory. Hi, my name is Dory. <laughs> you know you can't remember things like five minutes ago. <laughs> it's Chani. It's Chani, guys. <laughs> the the reboot's gonna come out, and you're gonna be like, okay, what's her name? You're like, oh, sheesh! <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> 
It's Shang Chi. Oh, yeah, what about Doctor Kynes? Do you want to see any more of him? Oh, you mean the Cylon guy? No, that's not. No. Talking about the guy that sh- like gives them the tour of the planet. Oh. And he's Chani's uh, dad. But he's gonna be a female in the reboot. Is it the guy who in Force Awakens? That was like yeah. This? Okay. Yeah. Max. Fine That's Chani's dad. Kid. Yeah. I had no idea from watching this movie. Yep. <laughs> no idea. Yep. This is this this movie is made for people that I think like the books. Maybe. It can connect the dots themselves. Yeah, it definitely was like, when I first watched it, I'm like, this is weird, and I don't know most of this. After reading the book, I'm like, oh, yeah, well, this makes more sense, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is weird. Do you think the... the but the then also that... didn't make sense in terms of the combat and action. I'm like, I don't know how any of this action is supposed to work. Do you think the person that filmed this movie even read, like, understood the book? Maybe they read it, but maybe they didn't really understand it, so they didn't really connect those um, dots. I mean, he wrote... Because David Lynch wrote, they it said that he wrote the screenplay. So you would think that he would have read the book. I understand he probably read the book, but did he understand the book? Oh, I don't know. Or did he just kind of like, sure, this beat happens, this beat happens, this beat happens. You connect the dots. I would think he would know, but I'm not gonna. I feel say, like I'm seeing a lot of bad things in this movie. I'm not gonna say one way or another. Should we give a review on it? I want to abstain from... No, we're review. giving reviews. A, we're giving a review. We're giving a review. <laughs> One is, should somebody watch this movie? One or zero? This is so hard. I, think, I, don't, I don't know. I'm so middle ground <laughs> on this movie. There's good things in this movie. Okay. There's also massive rooms to improve. <laughs> yeah. One or zero? <laughs> I don't give out many zeros. Okay. Because I'm pretty much like, if it's not Batman Returns, or <laughs> Moonraker, I'll give zero. it a one. Are you giving a one or zero? No. What, what, you'd give your review first. No, that's not how it works. What? Because what? <laughs> mine is the second digit, so I'm going to go second. No, you go, you know, no, you're giving out your first. <laughs> I'll give it a zero. You're giving it a zero? Yeah, I'll give it a zero, yeah. So if you give it a zero, that's a zero. If you give it a one, that's a one. I'm, I just want to abstain. No, hey, you audience. can't. Otherwise, it's both zeros, Joey. Otherwise, it's zero, zero. I don't know if it deserves two zeros. I like Paul. But there's a lot of... There's a lot of... What about the telling, effects? but no showing. What about the effects? Yeah. Oh, the effects were great, except for one part where he's running up to the worm. and like, oh my gosh. Okay. You can basically see like a blue silhouette of Paul running up to the worm. Okay. All right, Joe. One or zero. We're over an hour now. We are over one or zero, hour. yeah, one or zero. Dude, this episode went fast. Come on. Uh, <laughs> one is oh my gosh. I'm dying. I don't know what to say. One or zero. I'm gonna Okay. You have one minute to give me a score. A coin flip. <laughs> um You have one minute. Hey Siri, flip a coin. I just didn't even say what it was. No. Okay. Um, okay. Heads is... Heads is... Watch the movie. Tails is... Do not watch the movie, okay? Hey, Siri, flip a coin. You know what? I'm going to give it a one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to give it a one. Okay. You know what? There's enough. There's enough. And if you're a fan of the books, watch this movie. Sure. If you want to listen to exposition, watch this movie. Watch Tenet. If you, want, if you want this next position. Watch, not Tenet. I wouldn't say Tenet. I mean, there's a lot of exhibitions. Inception. Like yeah, Inception. <laughs> you watched Inception. It was good. Yeah. It was, I don't like Inception. But I would say if you're, su- if you're such casual, you don't want to go for that Shakespearean play, don't watch the movie. I feel like the general audience would hate this movie. Yeah, even though I gave it a zero, I'm really looking forward to the new movie. Because I, when I watch this movie, I only look at, like, how would this be infinitely better modern day with a director that wants to make not just some sort of recreation of the book or something, but just a good movie. Yes. <laughs> like, just wants to make, like, a cinematic experience, you know, like yeah. a blockbuster sort of yes. thing. I have hope that the reboot will be better than this. Yeah, I'm sure it has to be better than this. It has it's to be. It's just a matter of people seeing it. There's the idea of... Kenny was talking to me about this, but I hate the reboot Battlestar Galactica. And he's worried. Well, he has the thought that maybe I'll like the original more. You'll like this version, the David Lynch version, more than the De- Dennis 
uh, Villeneuve. Yes. I feel, like, I feel like this book relies too heavily on the book and that you'd have to read the book to really connect all the dots. If kind of felt like that, yeah. Yeah. But maybe I just need to watch it more. And to truly dive myself into the I can watch more. this again before the new movie comes out. I'll watch, br- so, bring it up, okay? I'm also, I'm also keeping some things about the book that might be twists, yeah, in the new version. So keep be ready for more twists, more okay. reveals and stuff, okay? Don't feel like you've missed everything. I don't feel that way. Right. Maybe I forget all about this movie by the time it goes around. <laughs> by October? About... You really are Dory. October? It comes <laughs> yeah. out in October? Yeah, October 22nd, I think. I thought it was coming out in December. No, it's sooner. Yeah. Whoa. It's only like two months away. Crazy. Yeah, I come back for a weekend, and maybe we should watch that movie together. Okay. Uh, so that's our re- retro review. Yep. I'm calling it. Um, then after this, this is the last podcast we're in the same room for a while. Yeah, we'll be remotely while you're at school. I mean, I'll be at school, but I'm where I am. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So what would, what do we think for upcoming podcast stuff? Do we think Shang Chi is coming up real quick? That's I'm, like two weeks. Yeah, we need it's something. September first. I mean, we got this podcast coming out this next Sunday. Is it September first? Yes. Oh, I thought it was. What am I thinking of? All oh, right, because this is coming out. Okay, yeah. So yeah, next would be Shang Chi. Yeah. The Are you going to be able to see Shang Chi? Who knows. I, it's up in the air. There's so many kids you need to find a at stinking, my school that's like... You've got to find a stinking theater by your school. Yeah. There's like no... I could do it over. You have like no choice. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. All right. So, yeah. So that'll be the next episode. Yeah. If not, then you can get... Then after that, we'll see. Because we want to do, uh, do this trailer. We want to do episodes both on... We're not sure if we want to split up, but episodes on... The original, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy and the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Yes. So we're not sure if we'll split that up between two different episodes or That's, how we'll do that. We're going to argue about Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah, we'll see. We're gonna, but, but we're going to be absolutely absolutely agreeing on Spider-Man 3, which it ruins the entire trilogy in my opinion. So, and we also want to do, at some point, I'm not sure how soon though, but we have plans for a start doing character studies we were thinking about boba fett for preparing for book of boba fett boba fett that's yeah. a good one that's a good idea for a character study yeah where we just talk about a character and their history in canon and stuff like that right i'd like to do one about maybe apollo or starbuck but i don't i know you don't that's just to. not relevant though we need not to do yet. relevant character studies we're going to the fall fall's a big movie time so we would have to stay relevant that's that's for like more so dry seasons like maybe spring will be pretty dry yeah maybe uh so that's our episode today. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Did you hear that Venom 2 might be delayed until 2021? In 2022? We're not talking about news anymore. Well, Thanks we'll for listening this, to this we'll episode this the of the Fast and Lightsey podcast. Check us out on Twitter. Uh, link in the description. Uh, where we'll, I'll be posting news. I was thinking about doing some polls, but again, I remembered. No, my phone looks at our Twitter. Probably. Who cares? <laughs> this has been your Captain Kenny with my XO. Joey. And this has been the Faster Than Lightspeed Podcast. 